Hurricane Milton. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm coming to you uh, from a different location, obviously, and um, basically due to Hurricane Milton. Um, if you are um, very aware of what's going on on the uh, east coast of the United States, you know, with Helene and then, of course, Milton, you know, a lot of places are under devastation. And although, you know, it can be kind of looked at as, you know, in every, you know, I mean, it's something that's a natural occurring effect, you know, hurricanes, tornadoes, things like that. Um, it's a part of nature, part of who we are, part of what we're experiencing. And although it is that, a lot of people are suffering. And so just to kind of, I was out today um, driving around and kind of taking in the sights of what's been going on, tuning into the energy. And first off, when I woke up this morning um, from a, a very good night's sleep, coming back into the body, and waking up into the energy, it was very overwhelming. Um, and just to start off, you know, with today. So there's a lot of people that are out there suffering. And with that, you know, comes also gratitude, um, looking more in depthly about what is, you know, important to us. We have electricity out, internet out in widespread areas. We have, still have flooding and water still flowing in, uh, you know, to the low-lying areas. A lot of beaches are closed still. There are parks that are closed. We have, you know, some food, gas stations are closed, no fuel. And, you know, with that comes uh, more devastation because people can't get back and forth to work. And so, you know, some may lose their jobs. Some may have, you know, lack of pay because they weren't able to make it to work. Now, with that being said, you know, there's a lot of things that can be uh, looked at in a positive way, you know, and to look at that, you know, as I was driving around looking, I seen all these trucks, like herds and herds of trucks, not just from Florida, but from all other places that were coming to help, uh, you know, get restore electricity and things like that. You know, they did get the things that they could get done quickly done, though there are some that are still where it was like a full-blown, you know, transporter, or whatever they <laughs> you call them, you know, the electrical lines where they need more attention. And so those are the ones that are, um, they're working on, you know, of course, maybe not immediately because it's not a fast fix, but those who they could fix quickly, they got done uh, and they are, some do have it. So it's intermittent between areas where they do have it and they don't have it. I'm actually one that doesn't have it. And so uh, I uh, keep recharging my, my you know, phone and everything like that. And there's no air, air, you know, air conditioning, you know, and we have to have a generator and we're actually borrowing <laughs> some electricity uh, you know, from a neighbor, which helps out as well, though we don't have any hot water. So cold food, snacks, uh, you know, to help restore us, you know, with energy and everything like that. But it is uh, quite devastating. And it kind of reminds me actually, where it's getting to the point where like when we had COVID, and although they wanted us all to stay home, it's like, running out of gas, you know, we're not going to be able to go anywhere, <laughs> you know, until they get those. But every gas station I drove by was closed. There might have been one or two that was open and the lines were backed up so bad. And then others were very angry. You know, I need to get my car washed. And of course, with water, some of the uh, gas station or the, not the gas stations, but the car washes are unavailable. Uh, so maybe their electric is out still. But it is widespread and they're still flooding, things like that, trying to get food out to people. But in the midst of it, there's still positive uh, things that we can look at, right? So it's more about, it can bring you into, you know, being grateful for those who are coming to help, right? Puts you in a space of gratitude. 
then you do have those who are able to open to, and they're helping and going beyond, you know, to help those who aren't. You know, a lot of the stores have lost their food. Some of them aren't even open. There's limited uh, stores open, places you can get food. Uh, but within that, they are doing their best. So, you know, there are certain positive things that you can look at uh, from that perspective. And so as, as I was driving around, looking at all these places, trying to get, you know, the few items that I needed, um, I was successful in being able to obtain them. Uh, and it's just like basic needs, right? The tissues, toilet paper, uh, dish detergent, things like that. And, you know, with that, having the gratitude, but also um, looking at, you know, what is more important, right? A lot of times these things bring us back to our basic needs. What is it that we really need? What can we do without? So it, that can be a lesson because in everything there is a lesson and it is taking a look at it. And this year at the beginning of the year, I had done a reading channeling that this year is going to be all about you know, looking more authentic, looking for what matters. Because uh, a lot of times when we get far away from that, you know, things that really matter are basics in life and we want to be lavish and nothing, you know, wrong with being lavish and living that type of lifetime. But a lot of times we forget uh, what is more important, you know, and instead of, you know, having like a mansion, right, when it's not necessary. But, you know, it's, it's a, an experience to have one. And so there's nothing wrong with it. But I'm just saying, you know, it, things like this bring you back to what am I grateful for, right? Having gratitude and appreciation. And then also what really matters, authenticity. And so that was at the beginning of this year. And of course, now we're in October, uh, you know, bringing in truth and more of that alignment. Uh, for a lot of us, especially during this time in this situation. And if you, if you take a look at it, you can kind of see that October puts that there. Uh, Libra, you know, uh, if you are, I don't really do astrology, but I am a Libra. And with that, you know, seeking balance, finding truth, uh, finding trust in yourself and the universe to be present and trust in yourself your inner guidance and following that and then un honoring that by doing that and following through with what you're being guided to do. And so a lot of this is uh, topsy-turvy right now and uh, kind of looking and seeing through the disaster, uh, what is the creation that is creating more meaning in, in your life, what's more meaningful in your life, you know, and when we can do that, you know, although the disaster happens to bring that about, uh, if we can see it, then we can honor it more and fully in who we truly are and the experience that we're having. And it's like, okay, enlightenment comes within that space, that place that you are when you're able to look at it and see it from that point of view. And so when we are looking at, you know, things like that, no matter what the, uh, you know, situation that arises that brings about the struggle that we are going through. There's always something to see lessons, uh, feelings, emotions, um, aha moments uh, along with it, because most generally, uh, almost, I would say 100% of the time, basically, certain situations are created for you to take a look at certain things. Uh, within your life and that lifespan and which brings about the creation of something else and new more and then what you want or what you're currently creating to expand upon that and to fill your wishes, your divine desire, right? And so from that point of view, allowing that to happen and to bring that forth to you uh, through them on the other side to share in this time and moment with you and to help guide you with the information that you're needing and what you are seeking in this time and moment and allowing all the rest to just fade away uh, from that perspective when we're in the state of suffering. And it's in that chaos that a lot of times we are disconnected and we can't see what is really going on uh, in that moment that we are having the experience because chaos brings about suffering and then stress and you know trauma it also brings about different hormones, emotions, feelings, depression, you know, doubts, and in our disconnection, we can't hear and be present with ourselves and connected to source to get the guidance that we need during times of suffering. 
which brings about the awareness of ourselves because when we are connected we can bring about the understanding of who we are what we're doing what we're experiencing and what all is going on here and the main purpose and point of it right and so that is to share in it uh, with source to look beyond the suffering uh, brings about itself into the place that you're currently are and experiencing itself through that situation and with that you know nothing is karma nothing's done in harm nothing's done purposefully everything is for the good in it although a lot of times the good has to go through what is not uh, as we look at it from that point of view and being connected is something that is really important and i do say things you know as far as help to guide you in in sessions and you know also in my videos it's important to meditate it's important to connect and because when we're disconnected we don't get the messages we don't get the in, in the uh, inspiration to go and do something go somewhere when we're needing something in a certain situation especially during times like this and from that point of view we just miss it right and on that perspective we're not understanding our sole purpose in the moment why we're we choosing to be here where we are in the moment to experience this when we could have gone and done something else uh, you know later on or had a different experience but we are all where we are <laughs> in the moment where we're supposed to be right um from that perspective i want to just say like when we are meditating and a lot of people when i first started meditating i didn't get that first when people would say take your meditation out into the world right and having done the meditation i understand more now is because when you are meditating and you're separating yourself from the mind you are more in the space of awareness and observance instead of reacting in in the uh suffering you know the chaos uh, the mind that goes off and spins uh, when you are meditating, you're separating yourself from your mind, you're observing it, you're being the observer in the space, you create this space. And so from that point of view, when you're meditating and you're practicing that, that is your practice out in the world. So that is how you want to be out in the world. And is it really a great time to be going into being spiritual <laughs> right now? But it is important. And although we term it important, uh, spiritual, don't get all spiritual on me, right? Uh, right now, because now we're in chaos, you know, this is not the time, but it is, it's the time that we need to kind of look at things, take a look at what is going on, understand who we truly are, why things are happening, and what is it that we're supposed to get out of it. Looking through the mirror in the stream of consciousness, creating the situation to bring that to you uh, from that point of view. And when we are able to see that mirror, we can see it and reflect on it uh, from that perspective, right? And then make changes. So when we're able to learn what's why meditation is important and a lot of people say oh well you know i go running and get into the zone that's my meditation but it's a different kind of meditation this is a meditation where you're an observant of your situation you're you're being the observer and not the actor or the doer because when chaos hits we all panic we all stress we all get into these uh, karmic loops, you know, and so with that, we do things that we are disconnected from, right? And so we're not hearing the guidance. And then other things happen from that point because when things happen that we don't want to happen, it's because we're disconnected. We're not getting the point, we're not getting the picture, we're not connected, we're not receiving the guidance or hearing what source or your guides are saying to you, the angels. The masters teachers and loved ones and so when we have that disconnect where you're not able to tune in and see that and so meditation getting out of the mind on a daily basis is important and then you take that out into the world so when certain things arise in your life you use that technique because you've practiced it and you understand it and you know it and i have through my own journey i understand that and now when things come arise right for instance, having known that hurricane was coming, I always tune in. I don't go, uh, although I may peek at the news to kind of see what's going on there, but my main center is about divine connection, connecting and reading the energy and the vibration of what's actually happened. And everything that happened is exactly what I got in my meditation, including the aftermath, where we were gonna be okay where I was and to stay, but we're not going to be okay because 
We don't have any electricity. We don't have any, any um, uh, you know, hot water, uh, things like that. We did make amends, a situation to it so we can have those things, but we are still in lack of certain situations, right? That we would normally have and just utilize without really thinking about it on a daily basis. And so sometimes we take things for granted, right? But this always brings us back to a place of gratitude and remembering, you know, what is really important, you know, your eating, you're taking a shower, you know, the minimalist stuff. And I, I do tend to live with little stuff, minimalist, right? But in the event also, uh, for me, I was like, oh, you know, I'm not really prepared as I probably should be because I am minimalist, right? I don't need this and I don't need that. But when this came time and I was like, I didn't have the things I needed in order to do what I needed to do. <laughs> so in that practice, this gives me something to look at and to contemplate. What is it that I need, sh that I should have on hand, not that I need to go out and, you know, buy a house, you know, uh, extravagant things, but what should I have on hand in these certain situations when they come about, you know, and these are certain lessons that are very helpful on our journey to awareness, right? We should have certain things and precautions in hand just in case we do need it, like sentient cords, <laughs> you know, but I tend to live as a minimalist, right? And so I never know when um, I'm going to be up and moving or when the spirit's going to be like, okay, go here, go there, do this, do that. Um, and I tend to not take a lot of stuff with me, <laughs> you know, it just basically needs what I, what I need and have. And so when I am meant that I can stay somewhere and then there's a, you know, disaster that happens like this, then I don't have the things that I need. And then I need to turn in and listen, where do I go to get this and then go, right? That's manifesting, that's listening, that's tuning in, getting your guidance and going do with it getting that item that you're needing that you've got the information on and so that's my practice right i meditate every day uh, i've been doing it since 2010 um, and i've built that connection where i can tune in no matter where i am whether i'm out in nature or sitting here in my room uh, and connect and read the energy of what i'm needing to know and they share it with me Sometimes it'll be like, I'll get the guys to sit down and write and I'll just write out everything and I'll be like, okay. Sometimes I'll just meditate and, uh, you know, draw in the energy and read the energy. So, and with that, you know, again, you know, everything that I received in the meditation was accurate, right? And so beginning to meditate is really important. And so I can't stress that enough, you know, rebuilding your divine connection and stop taking and letting people be in in your connection and relying on other people for that connection because if you're looking at the tv they're not going to tell you what store to go to they're not going to tell you where to go get this they're not going to tell you any of that right <laughs> um other than you know what it is that they can tell you but you have your inner guidance which will guide you to the things that you're actually needing like go get an extension cord at this place or this place you know um so it's just something that is, you know, I, I really cannot stress, you know, enough that uh, meditating, getting out of the mind, having your direct connection is a very important, not just in, you know, situations like this, devastating in situations, but also the practice of feeling good, health, balance, chakras, aligning, connecting, developing uh, your abilities, your skills, um, higher consciousness, awareness, um, and developing that and shifting the, con the lower consciousness uh, that we have that we're not aware of that we actually are able to attain in this lifetime. And that's a higher consciousness and a perspective that we came in with, but then we've been talked out of, right? And so <laughs> from that point of view, we kind of don't do that. Like I in my before awakening, you know, I didn't meditate. I came in knowing, um, but then as I, life went on, I kind of forgot, right? And because a lot of us do, it's just what we are, we're trained into, you know, if you didn't have those who were guiding you uh, to stay awake and open um, for the most part, but 
when we have these situations, you know, and then after my awakening, I came back, you know, to, and I've just been meditating ever since. And while I'm on the topic, you know, there's a lot of things that are going on uh, in the in the world, you know, with these uh, devastations, these uh, disasters, you know, and um, there was a Facebook post that a person posted and oh, look at all this um, debris on the on the beaches, right? And if anybody, the post was about, you know, if anybody is you know, cleaning it up, or you can always PM me if you want to get together, we can do it. Why not just take the initiative and just go do it? Why need other people to do there and be there with you? If you go and start, maybe other people will come and join you instead of waiting on others or expect others to do it. It's the initiative, taking the initiative to do the things that you, we know we should be doing, but we don't do, right? Which is the what they call the laziness, right? And so from the point of view, we don't take it from that perspective, right? We don't need to be told to go clean up a beach. We don't, I mean, it, it's ours there to enjoy. It's been given to us. It's uh, here for us to, to go and visit when we need it. And so if we're not taking care of it, it's not gonna be there. And that's just like anything in all other things, right? And so if we're not doing these things to help other people or to help ourselves, in this place, this time frame, this reality, this perspective, then, you know, nothing's going to change. And now is the time to do it. It's the great awakening, you know, it changes upon us and a lot of things are changing. And if we don't change it, then it changes for us, you know, and that is a, another great lesson that I had is like, if you don't change, then something comes about that makes you change, <laughs> you know, and that for me, of course, that was the great awakening. And so it's experience of suffering. So awakening comes from suffering if we're not willing to do it ourselves and make the choice, make, take the initiative. And I bring that choice to myself, you know, what can I do in this moment from what I can do? Because uh, obviously I can't save the world <laughs> by myself, right? And we all have to kind of put pitch in, right? We're all here to help make it a better place than where it was or what it's been and to bring change and this is the time to do it it's change right and so that's why we're going through it and all the uh could you know the the devastation the tragedies or whatever the situation is to bring about the awareness that we need to make change right and so that's awareness of having that uh, the reason why we have things uh bring about suffering is to be like hey you know knock knock we need to make change because this is part of evolution. This is what we need to do to get on the ball, to move forward and to do something new, create something new, create new systems, create new school systems, create new laws, regulations, uh, different things like that. And the perspective that we have that, you know, everything is status quo and nothing changes and we should, we, this is the way that I am forever is, un, it's not true, it's untrue. Right? Because everything changes, everything is evolving. And from that perspective, we can allow it to evolve and evade into the conscious that we're doing. And so what can we do to make changes from this point of view? We all know what's going on in the world, <laughs> in our lives, how we're living, what's going on. And the other thing that came to me today, and it was a thought that just popped in and to share this uh, as well, you know, <clears throat> You know, I, I've had my share of not having a place to to live, you know, throughout my life uh, prior to awakening. And the thought that actually came in, you know, having going through these situations, these disasters, you know, you can relate it to how people who are homeless feels, right? They don't have homes, they don't have electricity, they don't have water, they don't have food, you know, and so you know, it's something to be grateful for, but to put yourself in the place of other people. What are they experiencing? What are they doing? And how would you want to be treated? And how would you want to be taken care of? Or, um, you know, just to be nice, general, you know what I mean? Even if you're just giving them like $5 a day or helping them give them a job or something, whatever the case may be, you know, maybe they just happen to have something you know, happen, and it's not the case that all of them are, you know, drug addicts or, uh, you know, 
things like that, or mentally ill, or whatever the case may be. Sometimes people just have a hard time. Sometimes people lose their job for no reason, or you know, things just happen. You know, and it's it's something to see and to be able to understand and relate to that. To know that uh, you know, at any time it could be you, right? And so, how are you going to maneuver through that? time it's a great opportunity to look at it in this moment uh that it's very when we when you lose everything it's very close to being in that situation that they are right and so from that point of view you know people lose hope you know they give up and then you know things tumble down from that point of view but the awareness that you can make change to not just your life but to other people and to do things that um are right um from all perspectives uh, we can bring about the change in the world that we want to see, you know, for everybody. And of, of course, it is important that we take care of ourselves in the event, but also, you know, instead of being against other people and being caught up in the chaos, you know, what can and how can we be a part of it and make change or help during these times like this of Milton, the Helene up in North Carolina and Tennessee and things like that because uh, they were pretty much devastated as well. So, but, you know, with time change or with change time comes <laughs> or time comes with change um, and evolution and understanding the perspectives, you know, on this. So and not everybody's going to be able to help in the same way. And so instead of waiting for others to do something because you're doing something or because you want to do something, but you're not doing something because other people aren't doing it, but you want to do it, but you don't do it. <laughs> uh, whatever that case may be, like the person on um, the social media that posted about the beach, you know, uh, just PM me if you're going to do it. Why not just go do it, right? <laughs> you don't need to wait for anybody, right? It's just doing it, just taking action, taking the initiative, initiative uh, being present and let other people join you, share that you're doing it, and then they will come and join you. There's people who are looking for others to do it, like permission, like you need permission to do something that is good. We don't need permission to do anything that's good. We can just do it, okay? And we can um, just take charge of our lives and just do what's in present in your life. Now, not everybody's going to do what you are desiring to do. Some may want to help feed the home. Somebody may want to go pick up stuff at the beach. Somebody may want to just help somebody across the street or whatever. And somebody may just want to drive uh, through a catastrophic situation and just send energy of love out or smile at somebody or say hi, you know, and be kind. Uh, and that's, that's just what is, you know, everybody's going to be a part and a play and a role, right? And so there, that's why there's no, you have to be like me or I have to be like you. That's why there is no oneness that is like that. Oneness is just dropping everything, your judgments, your religions, your belief systems, your race, your color, your identity, your form, and then just be, right? Uh, that's oneness. So a lot of people misunderstand what oneness actually is, right? It is although separation, but even though in our separation, you know, love comes together when we are struggling, right? And there's always somebody there to help you uh, and pick you up or whatever the case may be, if you're allowing it. Um, and then if you are the one um, on the other end, you can always be the one to help another person. And we all help in different ways. And just because somebody doesn't do it the way you're not willing to help and put forth effort in helping clean up the beach or go feed somebody or take food to somebody or check on somebody, doesn't mean we all have to. We can't all run to the same place to do it. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's exercising free will and doing what we are doing to express it in the moments of what we're being guided to, which comes back to connecting directly, right, to our meditation, our practice, being present and letting source guide you to who's the one that you're supposed to help, right? And I have that experience all the time, you know, and although I'm not out there doing certain things, I help in other ways. And that's why we all have our own thing. Right? And so it helps to be connected. And that is the most important thing, I would say, uh, being in your life on a daily basis, whether it is uh, you are in a tragic situation or, uh, you know, just meditating for health and wellness, connecting to the divine energy and allowing that to move through your body. Because when I get into meditation, I'm at a place where 
I just let go of everything and love and bliss just comes up and I'm just filled with that, you know, in my meditations and I feel good and my body heals and I'm connected, right? And so when we can do that, we are fulfilling ourselves and we're able to bring that out into the world and carry that out into the world with us, the energy and vibration that we're creating within ourselves. And we can see it from that point of view. And we can also receive the information that we're needing to receive from that point of view as well. So with that, I hope that is helpful. I did want to jump on here and just do a video today. I haven't been able to get to the park. They're all closed again. Uh, and so I don't know if I'm going to get into a park tomorrow, but um, yeah, if you have any questions, if you want to learn how to meditate, I do teach meditation. Uh, and if it's, you know, something that you haven't done or you struggle with, you know, it's a practice. You just keep doing it every day. You set your intention, your point. You, you learn how to ride a bike. You learn how to get on the computer. You learn how in school, how to do math. I mean, it's intention, it's practice, it's working on it. Meditation, the same thing. If we've been taking away from it or we've lost connection or we haven't been taught it since young, then, you know, it's a great time to start. And a lot of us haven't been taught it here in the United States, unless you've had, you know, the people around you who support meditation. Uh, and then, um, bring that into your practice in your daily life, bring it from the mats, what they say out into the world from that point of view. All right, uh, thanks for joining. Happy journeys. Again, if you're looking to learn how to meditate, I do teach meditation and I'd be happy to uh, do a one-on-one -on -one session with you and we can help you get you started on that right track. Happy journeys.